Do you have a uh, residence in Beaumont at all right now? Yeah, I own my home in Beaumont, yes. But you don't stay there? Because I can't afford to pay taxes and pay all these bills by myself. Who stays at the house in Beaumont? Nobody. Nobody can stay there right now. We can't afford to keep lights and stuff on if I had to move. And the child support will be $1,668, and that will begin November 1st, 2023. Is that your agreement? Yes, ma'am. And you've told the daycare that Mr. Watson cannot come see the child, correct? Correct. Did you give mom cash directly? Yes, ma'am. And how much do you think you have given mom cash directly? $10,000. He told me to stay away from his daughter. It's, it, it's cuss words in between that. Careful, Mr. Watson. Careful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you're starting to get into an area that you're going to get yourself right into a big old judge bear trap. You understand what I'm saying? This appears to be a suit that was filed by the state back in January 2023, Ms. Alexander. Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> I have reviewed the lawsuit filed by the state as well as the answer filed by Ms. Bennett. Um, the state may call your first witness. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, just to put it on the record, Your Honor, we do have a partial agreement. And the only issues before the court is phased in visits in back child support. So if I may, I'm just going to go through the agreement and have the parties acknowledge that they agree to the terms that they've agreed and then go back and do questions as to the other issues. All right. All right and the state will call Ms. Limbrick. Ms. Limbrick, what is your full name? Nikita Shanet mm -hmm. Limbrick. Okay. And what is the name of the child before the court today? Cabri Grace Limbrick. Okay. And what is uh, Cabri's date of birth? 1-26-22. Okay. Now we do have a partial agreement um, and I'm going to go through what the terms are that you've agreed to. Um, now, do you have any safety concerns between? No, ma'am. Okay. Do you have any concerns if your address is put into the court record? No, ma'am. Okay. Now, we've agreed that it's going to be um, joint managing conservator, and you are going to be the person to designate where Cabri lives anywhere in Jefferson County and any county that touches Jefferson County and Newton County. Is that your agreement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, we've also agreed that Cabri's last name um, is going to be Watson moving forward. Is that your agreement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, there was some DNA testing done, um, and it did come back that uh, Mr. Watson is 99.99% 9, 99 .99 that he cannot be excluded, and you're asking the court to find that he is the biological father, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so, the other thing that we've agreed to is once we figure out what the phased in visits are, um, depending on what the court orders, is that you are ultimately in agreement that dad would ultimately end up with the expanded standard possession, <clears throat> excuse me, the expanded standard possession order. Is that your agreement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now we're in agreement that dad is going to cover the health and dental through his employer. Is that your agreement? Yes, ma'am. Now, I calculated his child support based on what his current income is and given him credit for the health insurance that he's going to be covering through his employer and the union dues that he pays each month through his employer. And the child support will be $1,668, and that will begin November 1st, 2023. Is that your agreement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then the other thing would be the retro, but that's not in agreement, and we'll address that in a second. Okay? Okay. All right. Um, no further um, questions as to the witness as to the agreement at this time, Your Honor. If I may call Mr. Watson as to the agreement. Um, Mr. Watson, what is your full name? Kevin DeWine Watson. Okay. And um, we did do DNA testing. It was found that you are the biological father, and the court is going to find that you are the biological father of Cabri. Um, you, you're in agreement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now you're both in agreement that it's going to be joint managing conservatorship, and mom is going to be the person to designate where Cabri lives anywhere in Jefferson County and any county that touches Jefferson County and Newton County. Is that your agreement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the agreement is going to be Cabri's last name will be Watson. Is that your agreement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And once we determined what what any phased in visits will possibly be. The agreement is ultimately that you would get the expanded standard possession order. Um, is that your agreement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. 
And is it, is it your agreement that you will be covering Cabri through your health and dental through your employer? Is that your agreement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I did calculate your child support based on what you had provided to me um, through your attorney and giving you credit for the health insurance and cost and for the cost of the um, monthly union dues. And that child support amount will be $1,668. And that will start November 1st, 2023. Is that your agreement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, that's everything as to the um, agreement, Your Honor. And if I may, I'd like to recall Ms. Lindbergh as to the other issues. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Lindbergh, um, how often, um, so uh, how old is Cabri? She's one. Okay. And when she'll be two in January, correct? January 26th. Yes, ma'am. And how often does dad have visits? Has he had visits with Cabri since she was born? <clears throat> uh, maybe 10 or 15 times. Okay. And what were those visits? Uh, at, times, at, they just a few hours. He just went, showed up at the daycare and just stayed a couple minutes. Okay. So where were all those visits that he's had? Where had they been? At, at the daycare at the sitter. Okay. Now, is Cabri currently in daycare? No, ma'am. Okay. When was the last time that Cabri was in daycare? She was in daycare last week because mm -hmm. I had to do a drop-in because I had a CPR class here in Beaumont and my okay. grandmother couldn't keep her. Okay. And prior to that, um, when was the last time that Cabri was in daycare? Uh, this we moved in August, so it was like the end of August. Um, okay. Like the, about the uh, 26th, somewhere up in there. Okay. Has Mr. Watson had any overnight visits with Cabri? No, ma'am. Has he had any visits with Cabri on his own where no one was around? Uh, one time and he only it was only for like two hours and because he was trying to rush and bring her back and when was that visit oh it was when she she wasn't even walking in she was still crawling um it was in the winter months because it was cold uh say, i say around about october was it no september probably september october of last year okay. and are you what type of visits are you asking for to lead up to dad eventually having the expanded standard visits? Uh, what do you mean when you say that? Like, So are you asking for a phased-in visit? So you asking them yes, to- Yes, I do want the phased-in visits to where she gets to know him first. And then, um, I'm not mistaken, if I was under the impression that then he, he would keep her like for a couple hours and then it would go step on up from there. Okay. Are you asking for those visits to start with supervised phased in? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And for each phase, which I have discussed with you, there's like four phases. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is a reasonable number of visits for each phase that you would ask the court for? Well, I requested six. You were, I, you were asking, okay. Um, and who would be, who would you like to supervise those visits? Well, I had in mind my father or my grandmother, but I was brought to the understanding that there wasn't, uh, they had an issue. Okay. I, I don't know what the issue was with my grandmother. Objection, non responsive. Sustained. Who would you like to be the person to supervise the visits? Who would you like? Uh, my father, Jesse Lindbreak, or my grandmother, or Jackson. Okay. And where would you like the pick up and drop off once dad gets past the supervised visit, if if that is what is ordered? Where would you like the pick up and drop off of uh, Cabri to be? I prefer it to be our home where we, we reside at. Okay, from your residence. Um, did you and Mr. Watson ever live together? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, what help, what support has Mr. Watson provided to you 
since Cabri was born for Cabri? Uh, he helped with daycare. He bought um, her stroller and car seat. He uh, did her pictures. He he did give some money on her her uh, formula, and he also did some clothes. She needs some clothes. He sent some money for her clothes and diapers, wipes. Okay, so how much was the the daycare? Daycare was anywhere between four to five hundred a month. If it was five weeks in a month, you know, it was it was a hundred dollars a week. So, and okay. we went home. when it fell into a fifth week, it didn't matter who called it, just as long as somebody called it, it was paid for. And how much of the daycare did um, Mister Watson pay? He paid two hundred. I paid two hundred. I can't. I don't have the exact amount for it, like the months. Okay, and how long did he do that for? Up until October, the beginning of October. In October of what year? Of uh, 22. Okay. So, and when did he start paying for that daycare? Was that starting when? Uh, he didn't start in daycare until April of, mm -hmm. uh, she was what, four more so. Okay. So April of 2022? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And he was paying a half. And for the stroller, car seat, formula, clothes, and diapers, how much do you think that might have been monetarily? Probably mm, was about two or three thousand dollars. Did he give you any other monies to help you support Cabri other than what you've stated? No, ma'am. Okay. And are you asking for back child support? Yes, ma'am. And when are you asking the child support to go back to? From birth. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. Okay. Talk next week. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Miss <laughs> Bennett, I, I was looking at numbers and lost my spot. Miss Bennett, do you have any questions of Miss Limbrick? Yes, I do, Your Honor. It would be great. Miss Limbrick, what's your current address? Wait. Oh, wait. Uh, stop. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm live on the internet. Um, let's okay. not ask that question. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry, Miss Bennett. I don't mean to. No, I'm, you, I'm but, trying to figure this out. Okay. Do you live at the same address seven days a week? Yes, ma'am. Um, and you also have an, another child, correct? Correct. And what school district does that child go to? Right now, he's in Beaumont. Okay. Do you live in Beaumont? No, ma'am. How long have you not lived in Beaumont? Since August. Of what year? This 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 year. Okay. And do you drive from Newton to Beaumont every day to take that child to school? No, his dad helps. His dad lives in Sealsby. Okay. Um, do you have a uh, residence in Beaumont at all right now? Yeah, I own my home in Beaumont, yes. Okay. But you don't stay there? Because I can't afford to pay taxes and pay all these bills by myself. Who stays at the house in Beaumont? Nobody. Nobody can stay there right now. We can't afford to keep lights and stuff on if I had to move. And when's the last time you've lived there in Beaumont? August. And you've not been there since? I still have to come check on my place and I have not forwarded the mail. Okay, so all your mail still goes to a Beaumont address? Yes. Okay. And um, your son goes to a Beaumont school, correct? Correct. And the the uh, the baby that we're here about today goes to a daycare in Beaumont, correct? No, no ma'am. She does not. Um, when's the last time she's been there? She was a drop in last week because I had to do CPR class. A drop into a daycare in Beaumont? No, it's a lady. It's a lady that does it out of her home. She's a private sitter. Mm -hmm. And where is she located? She's located here in Beaumont. Okay. Are you in Beaumont today? No, ma'am. I'm at my grandmother's. Okay. Um, why do you why do you use a, a sitter all the way in Beaumont if you're living in Newton? I didn't say she's not in daycare, ma'am. I had to do a drop in. My grandmother couldn't keep her that day that I had CPR. Okay. 
So I had to drop in. That was the same day that Mr. Watson showed up to the daycare. Okay. Because you and you've told the daycare that Mr. Watson cannot come see the child, correct? Correct. Okay. And Not he's been here. Okay. He can't go to the daycare to see the child, and he's been reaching out to you consistently to ask to see the child, and you've not been able, you've not let him see the child, correct? No, he has not consistent. He only did this because you asked him to. The two times that he did reach out, he has not tried to reach out beforehand. Before okay. before we came to court, no, he did not. When he's reached out to you to see the child, um, say the last two months, did you let him? He didn't the last two months. It's been, it was April, the weekend before Easter. He reached out to my cousin to see about getting her. And he still ne never did. He complained about it, but he never did try to get something started to where he could see her. Then he did see her the following weekend at his mom's house. And he just by bypassed her like she was nobody. He didn't even acknowledge her. What is your sworn testimony when the last time Mr. Watson's asked to see the baby? When the last time he asked uh, was like two, wait, I have it written down. He asked, he sent a text on the 20, let's see, on the 28th, on the 26th and the, tw on the 28th and the 30th, he sent a text uh, asking about seeing her. So I on told him month? this month. And what did you tell him? I told him that I was advised not to talk to him because we didn't have an order or agreement or anything. You told him he couldn't see the child, correct? No, I didn't tell him he couldn't see her. I told him that I was just ordered not to talk to him. Okay. Who was ordered ordered you that you couldn't talk to him? I spoke with a representative, a lawyer. And a lawyer told you you couldn't talk to Mr. Watson about him seeing his child? He just said, I advise, he said, since you're going through the court system, there's no need to talk to each other because you're already going through the court system. He knows that, you know, he could have been doing visitation before. Now he's only doing it because you asked him to show some type of that he's been trying, which he hasn't. How long is the drive from where you're staying in Newton? to the sitter you have in Beaumont? Oh, she's like an hour and 15 minutes. Okay. And then how long does it take you to get from Newton to take your son to school in Beaumont? I don't take my son. I just told you. His dad lives in Silsby. His dad takes him to school. And so you don't drop off or pick up your other child from school at all? No. Okay. Is the house in Beaumont for sale? No. Is it furnished? Yes, no. I have things in here. Objection, Your Honor, as to relevance. Sustain. What is your work schedule, Ms. Lambert? I work Monday through Friday and every other weekend. What are your hours? Uh, it varies because I do home health through the weekdays. So it can be from uh, 8 or 9 at morning to... Uh, five or six at night. And then on the weekends, it's the every other weekend, sometimes it's doubles. When I work a double, it means it's going to be from, from six that morning to 10 at night, or either it could be just six to two, eight hours. It varies. So like um, when you took the child for that one visit, what, a week or so ago to daycare, how much did that cost? Come again? You said you had to do a drop off at the center. Uh -huh. How much was that? I didn't have to pay her. That was courtesy because she likes Cabri. She mm -hmm. was being nice and doing it for me. Okay. Um, when's the last time you've had to pay daycare anything? Since August, since I moved in. I think you just went on mute. Miss Lemmert. I'm going to tap the microphone. There you go. Okay. Hello. Mm -hmm. 
that's all I have for Ms. Lummer. Your witness, Ms. Alexander. Well, the state would call Mr. Watson. Yeah, no further questions of Ms. Limbert. Correct. Oh, no. No further. Go ahead. You can call your next witness. Uh, Mr. Watson. Yes, ma'am. He, he on his side, it's showing it's telling him that the host stopped his video. He was I trying. did because he doesn't have a strong enough internet connection to be able to hear him and see him. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay, Mr. Watson. Um Again, we've got a partial agreement, so I'm going to ask you some questions as to the visits in the back child support. Um, when was the last time that you visited with Cabri? <clears throat> the last time I visited Cabri was June at the daycare. Okay. And how long was that for? Four hours. So you spent four hours at the daycare visiting with Cabri? I'm gonna say it was four hours. Yes, 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 ma'am. Four hours. I was okay. there. And when, when was the last visit you had prior to that? Uh, I went to Miss Limbrick House and visit with Cabri. And do you recall when that might have happened? That was in February. February this I, year. I, yes, I had left the daycare. And went by, by Miss Limbrick House, and Cabri came, and I was playing with Cabri at her house. Okay. And how long was that for? About 45 minutes. Okay. Have you had any overnight visits with Cabri? No, ma'am. Okay. Have you had any visits where no one was around, where it was just you and Cabri? Yes, ma'am. And when was that? November the 12th of 2022. Okay. And did you pick up Cabri from somewhere? Yes, ma'am. Where did you pick Cabri up from? Luby's in Beaumont. And you picked her up and took her to a visit is a for a visit somewhere, correct? Yes, ma'am. And how long was that visit? That visit was like six hours. Okay. And it was just, was that just you and Cabri? Yes, ma'am. When I picked her up, yes, ma'am. And when I brought her back, I had my fiance with me. Okay. If the judge was to order some supervised visits, who would you like to have be the person to supervise the visits? I would like my mom to be the supervised visit, being that she was bringing the kid to my mom's house all the time and telling my mom not to let me uh, know that she was there. Um, Mr. Watson, have you provided any support for Cabri since Cabri was born? Yes, ma'am. And what kind of support have you provided for Cabri? I was paying I was paying the daycare. I was buying milk when she needed it, diapers, wipes. Okay. Now, when you were paying the daycare, um, how long was that for and how much were you paying each month? I was paying 500 bucks a month. Okay. And, and that started from, <coughs> that started from, I wanted March. It was from March of 2022. All the way up to the end of October. I okay. And what year was that? October 2022? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, the other items that you said you purchased or gave, did you give mom cash directly? Yes, ma'am. And how much do you think you have given mom cash directly? A total of about $3,000. Okay. Now, is that cash that you gave her to purchase these items that you referenced? Yes, ma'am. Some okay. of those, yes, ma'am. So other than the cash that you gave to mom to help her purchase the items like the stroller, car seat, formula, diapers, and clothes, and the daycare, have you given mom any other support? Yes, ma'am. The strollers and diapers and stuff I bought on my own. I didn't give her the cash to buy it. I bought that on my own. Okay. That was just other, that was other expenses. 
Okay, and how much do you yeah. think you spend on the stroller and diapers additionally? No, uh, that stroller ran me like five hundred bucks because it was a, like a four in one. Okay, well, and how much do you think as uh, with the other diapers and everything else that you? Oh uh, man, I was buying that in the bulk. So every 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 month, I was buying like a rough guesstimate. Um. Uh, Two thousand dollars, three thousand dollars in diapers okay. from Sam's in Beaumont. Okay. And um, how many other children do you have other than Cabri? I have one. And is that child a minor or? Uh, he's an adult. He's twenty-one. Right. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Your witness, Ms. Bennett. Mr. Watson, um, I have a few questions for you. So, um, we, if I, and I hear some background noise, Mr. Watson, I don't know if that's. That's not me. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So, you paid $500 a month for daycare from March of 2022 or 22. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you testified that you've given her about $3,000 in cash directly, correct? Yes, ma'am. Uh, plus, you purchased stroller diapers, uh, stroller five hundred dollars, diapers two to three thousand. You've also bought formula and wipes. Yes, ma'am. Um, paid for pictures, clothes, other items. Yes, ma'am. If you had to put a total of what you've paid um, for. We can do the math from March through October at five hundred a month, and then we can do the math of the three thousand in cash. How much do you think you've paid in total with the stroller, diapers, formula, wipes, and everything? I would have to pull it up on a calculator. Give me a second. Okay. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. I'm sorry. How much was that? What was that dollar amount? Ten thousand dollars. Okay. When you um, have been communicating with Miss Limerick in the past. Where has she resided during the weeks? Beaumont, Texas. What did she tell you about where she lives? She stayed in Beaumont, Texas. She just, as the, as the hearing, the first hearing that we had on, on this child support, she moved to Newton Den. So that first hearing was September the something. Now she stays in Beaumont. That's when I first heard, I mean, she, she stayed in Newton. That's when I first heard she stayed in Newton. Other than that, she'd been in Beaumont. Okay. And I only ask that because that comes into play for the drop-off and pickups, correct, Mr. Watson? Yes, ma'am. Because you work in Orange? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, now, you not had overnights with the child. Is that at your choice or because Ms. Limerick wouldn't let you? Ms. Limerick wouldn't let me. I have reached out. She won't let me. She and and you even reached out to the daycare this month and asked to come see the child. And what did they tell you? When I went there the first day, the very first day, she told me to come back. I went there. I'm going to tell you exactly what time it was. It was 11 o'clock. I went there. It was on a it was on a Wednesday. I went there on a Wednesday and it was 11 o'clock. She said, come back after two o'clock. So I. I said, yes, ma'am, I will, because she was the daycare lady was going somewhere. So I come back at two o'clock. And before I can get out the car good, she said, oh, she just come picked her up soon after you left. She just come picked her up. But I'm going to give you my number and I'm, you could text me and call me at any time. And then you texted the the, the, so the, the, the this month, correct? Yeah. So the next day I went to the daycare. And when I pull up, she, she she sends me a text that I forwarded to you mm -hmm. on the behalf of me seeing Cabri at daycare. I was no longer allowed to see her at daycare anymore. Ms. Lindbergh advised me not to let you come because y'all have a y'all have a, something going on in court right now until y'all get that resolved. And Judge, that would be our exhibit. Um, Six that we submitted. If we would like to admit into evidence as communications with the um, daycare provider. I'm sorry. I'll, yeah. object. I'll object just to hear say. Okay. That's sustained.
Mr. Watson, um, you have a 21-year-old, right? So you, yes, you've raised a kid before, correct? Okay. Yes, um, ma'am. The times that you, like the six hours when you had the baby alone, did you have any problems or issues or difficulties? No, ma'am. Not at okay. all. Ideally, um, you want to get to the expanded standard possession order, which Ms. Lumberg has agreed. Um, the phase-in schedule that she's wanting, she's wanting six weeks of first, third, six visits of first, third, and fifth from 10 to 2 supervised. Um, are you asking or requesting from the court that you not have to go three months of supervised visits to see your child? Yes, ma'am. Um, objection is to pre-negotiations. That's, okay. No, that's that's over. Go ahead. Um, ideally, so you would you. like to start out with the uh, expanded standard visitation, correct? Yes, ma'am. And um, you're willing to co-parent with Miss Limerick? Yes, ma'am. Um, in fact, uh, she sent detailed instructions to your mother when she would leave the baby with your mother on the care and how to take care of the child, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And she's left the child with your mother, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So she obviously has trusted your mother, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Ms. Limerick had, had asked about uh, you having supervised visits with her father, but has there been a situation where her father was threatening to you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, what did he say to you? He told me to stay away from his daughter. It's, it, it's cuss words in between there. Gotcha. Or, or he or he would hurt me okay. if I don't. So. Okay. Um, it was your understanding that the child's still in daycare, correct? Yes, ma'am. Um, until today, did you know that now the grandmother's keeping the baby during the week? No, ma'am. Um, she hadn't even bothered to explain that to you? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, where do you request uh, the drop-off pickup location be, Mr. Watson? The drop-off and pickups I requested was at ATB in Orange, being that Ms. Limbrick still stays in Beaumont. And being I work shift work, it takes me an hour to drive to Newton if I'm working to pick that kid up. And if, if it's a pickup time at six o'clock, I couldn't get there at six o'clock, but I can get to the HEB in Orange by six so, o'clock. Okay. And you get off at five, correct? Five thirty. Five thirty. So you could be there by six for pickups, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And that's and so your request is that the uh, pickups be at the HEB in Orange? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And we were proposing that the drop-offs would be back at the daycare on Monday mornings. Miss Bennett. Correct. Miss Bennett, mm -hmm. you, you can't ask questions about your negotiations. Okay. Take okay. a position or, or don't. Gotcha. And Mr. Watson, <clears throat> where, where do you propose that you drop off the child after your visits? At the daycare. Okay. And Mr. Watson, um, we've also requested that Ms. Limerick provide you, you've, you've requested the insurance, uh, the uh, Social Security card for the child, correct? Yes, ma'am. And she won't give that to you, correct? No, ma'am. Okay. And you're <laughs> requesting that you need the Social Security card and birth certificate so you can get the insurance going, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And are you requesting the court to order her to provide that information to you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> Do you feel like that you owe um, 22 past months of full child support for this child? No, ma'am. What amount do you request the court to consider for uh, back child support, considering that you have paid for daycare, clothes, strollers, diapers, formula, and cash to Miss Lumrick? 20,000. And if you're paying 1668 in child support starting November 1st, um, what are you requesting that you would pay a month in uh, arrearages? 
50 bucks, an extra 50 bucks. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Watson, are you also asking the court to take into consideration that this was not filed until January of 2023 and request that um, uh, any back child support no go, not go any further than January of 2023? Yes, ma'am. And if you look at January 2023, when this is filed and considering what you've been paid, you've been paying per month and paid over time, then that amount of urges would be significantly less, correct? Yes, ma'am. If I uh, if I understand correctly, <laughs> Ms. Watson, it's your understanding Ms. Limerick wants 1668 for 22 months, correct? Yes, ma'am. And if I do 1668 <clears throat> times 10 months, that comes to 16,000, correct? Yes, ma'am. And then giving you credit for payments that you've made in 2023, that should probably get you down less than $10,000. Do you agree? Yes, ma'am. That kind of contradicts what he just what he just answered your question the first time, Ms. Bennett. He, you asked him what a reasonable amount was. He said 20000 Now you're saying it's less than that? Well, I think that that was considering if it was going back full from the date of birth of the child. Oh, well, that's not the question that was asked, and that was not the question that was answered. So, Okay, well, and that was what I was talking about at the time. Mr. Watson, when I asked you about what uh, past child support would be for the child, um, previously, when you answered the 20000 that was if, if the court takes it all the way back to the date of birth, correct? Yes, ma'am. And if we take it back to January of 2023, we think that the court needs to look at the, the 1668 minus what you've been paying and to reduce it for $10,000 or less. Do you agree with that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And, and also, and you understand, Mr. Watson, being able to see your child and paying child support are two completely different obligations, correct? It is, yes, ma'am. But you've been fighting trying to see this child for the last year and a half, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you would like the court to take that into consideration? Yes, ma'am. And you, and, and in fact, you would, you would cherish the opportunity to have some makeup time for all the time that you've missed from seeing this child, correct? Yes, ma'am. You can't, you can't do makeup time, Ms. Bennett. There's no court order in effect. Gotcha. Um, would you like the court to take that into consideration in, in uh, beginning with a visitation schedule, Mr. Watson? Yes, ma'am. And would you like the court to take that in consideration and allow you to begin with an expanded standard visitation schedule? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that you will co-parent with Ms. Limerick 100%? Yes, ma'am. Um, and you, the two of you will co-parent <laughs> going forward? Yes, ma'am. So just to sum up, Mr. Uh, Watson, you're requesting that the expanded standard possession order start now, the pickup and drop off be at the HEB in orange, and that the ar arrearages be capped off at no more than $10,000. Yes, ma'am. That's all I have. You witness, Ms. Alexander? <laughs> A few follow-up questions, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Watson, you stated you work in Orange County, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what county do you live in? I stay in Newton County. Okay. Um, when did you know that you were the father of Cabri? When did I know after I got the DNA test, I knew for sure that Cabri was my daughter. Okay. Did you think you were her father prior to that? I didn't sign the birth certificate. I had a question mark about it. Careful, Mr. Watson. Careful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you're starting to get into an area that you're going to get yourself right into a big old judge bear trap. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. 
I told you, I warned you when you came in here and asked for the DNA test that I wasn't going to use the fact that you asked for a DNA test against you. But yes, sir. You need to be careful about, about the road yes, you're about to go down. You understand? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Miss Alexander. Thank you, Rona. Um, but you had visits with Cabri last year, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you were paying parts or all of it, the daycare, based on what you've testified, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you file any kind of pleadings yourself? That's in the January? court file, Ms. Alexander. You know, they don't need that. Okay. All right. No further questions, Your Honor. Your witness, Ms. Bennett. Mr. Watson, when did you get the DNA results? Uh, they sent me to get the DNA results. <laughs> I I got them when I got the when I went to the court last time for the hearing. That's when they told me about it. The results of the DNA. And even before that, you were providing cash, money, and to the yes, ma'am. Without a court order, correct? Yes, ma'am. And you would like the court to take that into consideration um, that you didn't even know that you were technically the father until the DNA test came out, correct? Yes, ma'am. That's all I have, Your Honor. Your, your witness, Ms. Alexander. No further questions, Your Honor. The state rests. <clears throat> no, I have no other witnesses, Ms. Alexander. No other witnesses, Your Honor. Ms. Bennett, the state has, has uh, rested its case. Do you have any? Uh, Recall or any other witnesses that you need to talk to? No, Your Honor. All right. Uh, I have some confusion. Go figure. Mr. Watson, you live in Newton County. Yes, sir. Miss Limbrick, unmute, please. I think we lost Miss Limbrick. There she is. Miss Limbrick, you are muted. There you go. Okay. All right. Miss Limbrick, what county do you live in? It was uh, Newton County. It will be Burke okay. video. No, I mean, that's what I want. You live in mm -hmm. Newton County? Yes, sir. Okay. So you both live in the same county? Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. Mr. Watson, where does, uh, where does your mother live? What county does your mother live in? Newton County. I'm trying to figure out where this is difficult. Okay. Miss Limbrick, have you in the past allowed Mr. Watson's mother to keep Cabri? No. Never. never. She has never spent the night or anything there. Because no. she won't keep her. His mom is sickly. She's a diabetic. So she said she won't keep Cabri because she don't know if she'll black out. She said when she gets older, she said she would. Okay. So you've never, so don't don't project into the future. My question is in the past. So you have no, never, never. Let, let me ask the question before you answer the question, because you don't know what yes, the question sir. is going to be, Miss Limbrick. Yes, sir. Have you ever left Cabri in the care of Mr. Watson's mother? No. Never? No. Has Cabri ever been to Mr. Watson's mother's house? Yes. And you were, you stayed there the whole time while Cabri yes. was there? Right. Yes, sir. Uh, does Mr. Watson and your dad have a history of issues, Miss Limbrick? Not that I was aware of. Are you aware that that your father may have uh, threatened Mr. Watson? No, sir, I was not. Okay. I mean, I, it's the, this is the easy problem to solve. I mean, I, there's no non-disclosure, so Miss Limbrick will be the one that, if they're supervised visits, that'll be supervising the visits. Uh, okay. And if everybody lives in Newton County, so the exchange is going to take place in Newton County. That's also pretty easy. Mm -hmm. huh. Now, the child was in a daycare in Jefferson County. Is that correct, Miss Limbert? Yes, sir. Not anymore. No, sir. All right. 
when the child was normally at the daycare in Jefferson County, what time would you pick the child up from daycare after you got off work? Four or five o'clock, the latest. Right. And Mr. Watson testified that there was a time period that he went by there to see the child and you had gone early to pick up the child from, from daycare. Do you remember that? Yes. Did you do that because the daycare worker contacted you to let you know that Mr. Watson was coming by to see the child? No, sir. Why did you get off early that day and pick her up from the daycare? I didn't get off. I, I didn't get off early to pick her from daycare. She has a doctor's appointment that day. And I do. I can't show proof. I can't show proof of that. You might need to you be ready for that. That's fine. That's it fine. It does sound a little suspicious, don't you, Miss yes, Lemon? Yes, it you does. To visit with the child and somehow the child got picked up early. Correct. And all this time he's been going to see her when he was going to see her today, care. I wouldn't do that. No. Okay. All right. But he had a history up to that point in time of visiting the child at the day. Yes. Yes. So you think that was just like a one-time thing because you guys weren't talking. He didn't know she had a, day, a doctor's appointment. Correct. Okay. All right. That's not, I mean, that's not a bad thing. It could happen, especially with that, if he was having regular contact with her at the daycare. Miss Lindbergh, let me ask you. Um, now, Mr. Watson, you said, was having some contact with Cabri at the daycare. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Why was he having contact at the daycare? How come he wasn't having contact at your house? Well, this is the thing. Okay, you have to put your emotions aside for the child because, you know, it's about exactly. the child. It's not about you anymore. Okay, <laughs> right. so when I wanted him to meet with my cousin because I couldn't handle it at the time. Okay. So I'd rather you meet with her with the baby than okay. to rub stuff in my face. Okay. So he didn't want to do that. So hold on, hold on. Don't don't jump to conclusions, Miss Limbert. I just want to know the reason why he was visiting with the child was the daycare was because you were having issues with Mr. Watson and you guys couldn't be in the same place at the same time. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, sir. Okay. So for whatever reason, y'all couldn't put that aside for Cabri. I did. I tried. I understand. Okay. Does he know where you live in Newton? Uh, he knows where my dad stayed. That's not what and I asked. That's, I asked that's you where, if, if yes, yes, he does. Because okay, that's okay. where I reside. You're living at your you're living at your dad's place. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Hey, Mr. Watson, you can still hear me, yeah? Yes, sir. When was the last time you actually seen Cabri? June. So it's been four months since you've seen this baby. Yes, sir. Right. Miss Limbrick, you, you did tell me that there was once or twice in September, I believe, that Mr. Uh, Watson reached out to you to try to make contact with Cabri, but you told him due to some advice that you got from an attorney that you couldn't make that happen. Is that correct? Correct. All right. So, before September, when you visited with this attorney, did Mr. Watson reach out to you to visit with Cabri? No, sir. Mm. But now, when did you stop sending Cabri to the daycare? In August, the end of August. Okay, so up until that point in time, he could go by the daycare and visit with the child. No, no, sir, he could. It was the incident that happened at the daycare where he disrespected the mom's mom, and okay. she made her feel uncomfortable. So I didn't want to jeopardize her being the only person to watch her at the time that I was living in Beaumont. Okay. So okay. I told him he had to come to my house. That's when he came to my house, okay. and I was trying to get him to meet with my cousin, but he didn't. I didn't stop him. I still let him see her okay. outside. That's not what I asked you, Miss Lindsay. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's the problem with people when they come into these video conference hearings and trials. They just tend to ramble. I just yes, want sir. you to answer my question. Yes, sir. You stopped the visitation at the daycare. Is that true? Yes, sir. When did you stop the visitation at the daycare? Uh, it was mm, back in. Mm, was it? September, October. It's probably September, October of last year. I can't give the exact date. 
So up till that point in time, Mr. Watson was having some contact with Cambridge and daycare, but it stopped in September, October of last year. Yes, sir. And since that time, the only contact that he's had is whatever you've been willing to give him that he's been willing to agree to. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Ms. Caber, have a social security card, Ms. Limbert? Yes, sir. So, Mr. Watson, you said that, uh, that your mother, your mother is capable of supervising the visitation if I order that. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And where does your mother live? What city? Newton. Okay. Newton, Texas. So everybody's right there in Newton. It's a happy little yes. place. Yes, sir. I was just there a couple of days ago. You like it? I, I'm from Woodville, Mr. Watson. I like everything to do with East Texas. So do I like it? No, I don't like Newton. So they used to beat us like a bunch of redheaded stepchildren in high school football, but that was 50 years ago, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. I know that's right. Uh, well, this is interesting. So, Mr. Mr. Watson, you haven't had any real contact with Cabri since June. Since June, yes, sir. Uh, I'm not blaming you, Mr. Watson. I'm just stating that's a fact. Yes, sir. And I got a 20 month old, 21 month old baby. Is that right, Mr. Watson? Yes. All right. Yes, Mr. Sir. Watson, let's let's look at this from a factual basis, okay? You're asking me to give you overnight weekend visits for this child starting now, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, so let's answer some simple questions. Have you ever had this child overnight by yourself? No, sir. Uh, have you ever had this child for an entire day by yourself? Yes, well, six hours. Yes, sir. I would say by pretty myself. Close. That's pretty close to a, a, a whole day. All right. So, and when was that that you had that one day by yourself? That was November the 12th. So, a year ago. Yes, sir. All right. So, if I'm doing my math right, you haven't had any contact with Cabri since June. And the last time you had any significant contact with Cabri was a year ago. Is that right? Yes, sir. That's not your fault, Mr. Watson. I'm not blaming you. I'm just stating a fact, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Watson, you have another child that's 21, right? Yes, sir. All right. So Cabri's 21 months old, right? Yes, sir. All right. Do you think, in your opinion, you think Cabri's ready to spend weekend visits with you without having seen you in four months? No, sir, not the overnight. I love, I love reasonable. When you get right down to the bottom line of it, Mr. Watson, it's just about what's right for Cable. Correct. So reasonable is okay. I, I do understand you wanting weekends, Mr. Watson. I do, and I'm going to give them to you eventually. But you got to get to know Cabri first again. And that's not your fault. I'm not blaming you for that. But that's what's in Cabri's best interest right now. You understand? Yes, sir. Right. Judge, got a yes. question. Um, I don't know what. No, no, no. That's, this I don't, is the wonderful don't thing. Hold on, Mr. Watson. Hold on. This is a wonderful thing about my spot, right? You yes, took, sir. You made the, the right choice and went out and hired a great attorney to represent you, Okay. So yes, she's going to do her job and make sure that I have the information she thinks I need in order to make the right decision in this case, or at least the one that slanted in your in your favor. That's her job. Yes, sir. So you don't get to ask questions. Miss Bennett. Gets yes, sir. Questions, OK. Yes, sir. All right. You, we'll let Miss Bennett do the job that you're paying her to do. Yes, sir. All right. All right. So I, I think I've heard all the testimony I need to hear. Mr. Watson's represented by Ms. Bennett. Uh, Ms. Limbrick does not have an attorney. And therefore, because you are pro se, Ms. Limbrick, that's a Latin term that means you don't have an attorney representing you. Okay. Um, Ms. Limbrick, is there anything else you think I need to know about this case before I make a ruling? No, sir. No. Look, y'all, I, I like honest. And honest is good. I do understand that people tend to hedge their bets a little bit when they get in front of me. I get it. It's just human nature. Uh, Miss Bennett, is there anything, any brief closing that you wish to make in regards to this case? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. Um, Your Honor, based on, uh, on Mr. Watson's testimony, I think he understands that there needs to be some sort of a phase in 
Um, but I think he is concerned about a long phase in. He would like to have some sort of short phase in so he could start spending some quality time with this baby that he's been trying to see for so long. Um, he, you know, he has been trying to, to, to help support. And I would ask that you take that into consideration in their request for arrearages. I think 22 months is too long. I, I don't, and he has been helping. Uh, he has been cooperative. Um, and I would ask that the court take that into consideration the fact that he's not been able to see the child even though he's requested and tried to go to daycare to see it. I asked the court for supervised visitation that we consider his mother to be um, the supervisor. We were hoping the daycare provider would be the supervisor and he could go to the daycare. But the problem is we just found out today that the child's no longer in the daycare facility. So that's- well, that makes that's, sense. They're not, yeah. They don't live there anymore. Um, and, you know, I think, I know we're on um, streaming, so addresses can't be discussed, but I think it, at some point, Mr. Um, Watson just needs to know where the child is living because he doesn't know the address in Newton or where they're staying. So that can be something that maybe can be addressed in the final orders. It's um, going to be in the order. I mean, okay. Miss, Miss Limbrick's home address is going to be in the court order and it's going to be the one in Newton County. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, and we would just request uh -oh. the court to be, um, do we lose somebody? Well, we, you started to break up, Miss Bennett. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's you know, okay. wonderful. And, and we would just ask the court to take into consideration um, a, a, a speedy phase in so he can start spending time with his child and um, not look at arrearages past January of 2023 when this AG case uh, first came up. Uh, and then he had to have the DNA testing to confirm that that he was the father. And that's a, that's a, Miss Bennett. I don't know if you were here um, when the DNA was done. Were you the attorney <laughs> of record? No. More than likely, Miss Bennett. I, when when I brought the parties in on the record and asked Mr. Watson if he wanted a DNA test, always mm -hmm. know, Miss Bennett, that I advise all of my uh, potential fathers in these paternity cases, they have a right to ask for a DNA test, even if they really don't need one. I, mm -hmm. And I probably push them toward taking a DNA test just to, so they, they can get that out of their head. Um, sure. I, but there, that's a double-edged sword. I don't use it against Mr. Watson for asking a DNA for a DNA test, but I'm also not going to allow Mr. Watson to use it as a shield in regards to the other issues. So. Perfect. Just that's, that's kind of how the nature of that is used. I would rather be safe than sorry. Um, but I have a number of occasions where the fathers, in fact, I had three or four this week that said, no, judge, I don't want a DNA test. I know I'm the father. That's their right as well. They have the right to say, no, I don't want to take one. So, sure. Got it. Uh, Miss Alexander, do you have any summation? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay. Um, the court's going to find the court's jurisdiction. The court's going to find. I will confirm the agreement of the parties. I'll make sure I got this right. And if I'm wrong, Miss Alexander will tell me, or Miss Bennett will chirp in and let me know that I did not have the agreement correct. The agreement is that Mr. Watson is found to be the biological and now the legal father of this child. The parties will be named as joint managed conservators of the child with Miss Limbrick as the party with the right to establish the primary residence of the child in Newton or Jefferson County or a county that touches either of those two counties. Um, we are going to change the name. I'm going to change the name of the child to Watson. Um, and at some point in time, Mr. Watson is going to receive the extended standard possession order. Uh, there will be some phased in visitation and I'll get to that directly. The child support is that Mr. Watson has agreed to maintain the health insurance on the child and the dental insurance on the child through his employer. Um, and he's going to pay child support in the amount of $1,668 per month. Miss Husband, there's Miss Burton asking somebody to step in and help her. Um, $1,668 in child support beginning November the 1st of 2023. Mr. Watson has no other dependents besides this child. Um, I did not hear anything in regards to court costs, but I am going to order that the court costs will be paid by Mr. Watson, but I will give him until April the 30th of 2024 to pay the court cost. Um, Ms. Alexander, is, did I have the terms in, of the agreement correct on the record? Just one clarification, Judge. The agreement was Jefferson County and contiguous to Jefferson and Newton. 
Yeah, any county that touches. I think I said that, but yeah. yeah. That's what I have in my notes. Jefferson oh, okay. in any county that touches them. No, just any county that touches Jefferson, not Newton. Right. Okay. I, I probably wasn't specific enough, but I, I, I see it on the paper. I understood what it's supposed to say when it gets to me. Jefferson, okay. any, any county that touches Jefferson or Newton County. Just no. Jefferson County. Just, yeah, only the counties that touch Jefferson and Newton, because the counties that touch Newton don't touch Jefferson. It's Jefferson so, and contiguous so the, and Newton. Okay, so that that see that's not what was on the record. So what's what the agreement is is Jefferson and contiguous to Jefferson plus Newton County. Yes. Okay, that's different. <clears throat> All right. All right. Yeah. Okay, I need to make that different then. So Jefferson and contiguous counties plus Newton County. Yes. Okay. That that's because that will get rid of all the northern counties. So yeah, that's probably a good good move on y'all's part. Now the only issues that are remaining before me are going to be the visitation and the retroactive child support. The court's going to find that it is certainly in KB's best interest for Mr. Watson to have visitation. I'm going to find that there has been some time that has passed since Mr. Watson has had significant contact with Cabri. And I'm also going to find that due to the fact that Cabri is only 21 months old, uh, that she and Mr. Watson are not ready for overnights at this time. I'm going to order a phased in visitation schedule with four visits at each phase, Ms. Alexander. That will be four visits supervised by Ms. Limbert. That will be four visits unsupervised for a half a day. That will be four visits unsupervised for the day followed by four one-night overnight visits Saturday at 6 to Sunday at 6. Um, the four visits that will be supervised will be 1 to 5 p.m. on the 1st and 3rd and 5th Saturday of the month. The four visits that will be unsupervised will be on the 1st, 3rd, and 5th Saturday of each month from 1 to 5. And the four visits that are unsupervised from the day will be from 9 to 6, I believe was what the phase-in schedule says, Miss Alexander. Is that right? I, th I believe it's something similar to that, yes, Judge. All right. It's either nine to six or eight to six. It's one or the other. Um, for the record, I will say 9 p.m. to 6 p.m. That's what I will say for the record. So nine to six is what the visitation would be. Um, now, Miss Limbrick will supervise the visitation of the four visits that are supervised. All exchanges will be at the home of Miss Limbrick. They live in Newton County. There's no reason to meet someplace else. Um, now, if the parties wish to agree, to meet someplace else, Miss Bennett, Miss Alexander, and Miss Limbrick, they can do so. But in the order, it's going to say that the exchange of this child will take place at the home of Miss Limbrick in Newton County. Um, and that way, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about where that's supposed to happen. And any request for non disclosure is denied. So Miss Limbrick is required by statute um, to give the exact location of where the child can be exchanged. Uh, Miss Limbrick is hereby advised by the court that the law states, if you change your address, Miss Limbrick, you are required by statute to notify Mr. Watson by certified mail 30 days prior to your change in address of where that address is going to be. That will give Mr. Watson an opportunity to make adjustments to where he can pick up the child. And if you intend to move someplace outside of the geographic restriction that is in my court order, Mr. Watson would be able to go out and hire an attorney to stop that from happening. Okay, so that takes care of that issue. Retroactive child support, the amount of $15,000, that'll be paid back at a rate of $100 a month each and every month, also beginning November the 1st of 2023, and every month thereafter until it's paid in full. That take care of all the issues before me in this court, in this case, Ms. Uh, Alexander. Yes, Your Honor. Miss hmm. Bennett, did you hear and understand the, the, the court order as I just put it on the record? Yes, Your Honor. Right. Ms. Bennett, do you wish to review and sign this court order? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Ms. Bennett. I don't know if I tell, have told you this, but um, I do wish more attorneys would review and sign court orders. <laughs> hard and too many of them just say, nope, I don't need to review and sign. I don't know about that. Um, Ms. Limbrick, uh, you are unrepresented in this case, and so I'm going to inform you first. Ms. Alexander is going to prepare a court order based on my order today. So that is going to be 
majority of that will be the agreement that you and Mr. Watson just agreed to on the record in my court. There will be part of it that is not agreed, and that is the retroactive child support and the, and the visitation. And, and then Ms. Alexander is going to send that proposed order to Ms. Bennett. If Ms. Bennett agrees that the order that Ms. Alexander prepared matches what I said, then Ms. Bennett's going to sign it. And then they're going to send it to me for signature, and I'm going to sign it because I believe that if both attorneys sign it, the order has to be right because um, attorneys are hard to get to agree to anything. But if they, they agree that the order is correct, then I'm going to sign it and get it back to them. Then they're going to make a copy of it. They're going to send it to you. Mm -hmm. Now, Miss Alexander will send a copy of it to Miss Bennett and Mr. Watson, and they'll do their thing. But that's mm -hmm. how you'll get your copy of the court order. Okay, Miss Limbrick? Yes, sir. Now, Miss Limbrick, Miss um, Bennett is aware of this. Miss Alexander is aware of this. So I will advise you of this, just so you know. You do not have to be satisfied with the ruling that I've made today. If you are not satisfied, specifically in regards to the visitation and the retroactive child support, because the rest of it was agreed. But if you're not satisfied with my ruling on the visitation and the retroactive child support, then you are free to file a notice of appeal with the district clerk's office in Jefferson County. That appeal must be in writing. It has to be filed within the next three business days. And you have to be specific in your appeal, Ms. Limbert, and tell the referring court what part of my ruling you disagree with. You're also responsible for sending a copy of that written appeal to all the other non-appealing parties. Do you understand that is your right, Ms. Limbert? Yes, sir. All right. Does that take care of all the issues in this case from the position of the state? Yes, Your Honor. Um, do we want to set an order entry date? Not that I, I don't think trust so. Miss Bennett's pretty good about getting the orders done and back. I'll be, I'll be quick. I, okay. I will. If there's will, an issue, we'll just. Exactly. If if Miss Alexander and Miss Bennett do not agree mm -hmm. on the terms conditions of the court order, then Miss Alexander will be forced to, to set this for an entry date sometime at the first part of November. Perfect. All right. All right. So if you don't okay. see it, if you don't get a court order in the next couple of days on this case, Miss Limbrick, then watch your email for when the next hearing date is going to be, because you know there's going to be another hearing. And the only thing I'm going to do at that hearing, Miss Limbrick, is just make sure that the order that I get is the one I'm going to sign because it matches what I said today. Okay. Okay. All right. Y'all are all free to go. I thank you for being here today. I wish you both, all of you, all of you, the best of luck for Cabri's benefit. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Thank Good luck. You.